Hello, my name is Johannes and today we're going to show you how to import and export from Houdini straight into Unreal. We're just going to do a, a simple explosion uh, texture sheet today. Um, and we're going to start off, I, all I did is I, I got a sphere and then I uh, applied a mountain to it and then uh, click the shelf tool fireball. Uses uses that and it gave me something like this. Now to get this into Unreal, ideally you want to get this into a 64 frame flipbook. Um, right now the explosion is going on way past 64. You can see at the bottom here, it's currently you know, going way past like 70 odd. So what we want to do is we're going to want to trim this down. Also you can see that this explosion is clipping on, on the edge of this bound. So to fix that, we're just going to go into your your pyro uh, dot network you know select your resize container node go up to your max bound and untick this and you'll see that now this box should resize itself to fit with the explosion it might take a little bit longer because you're actually rendering a bit more voxels than, than what you should be but at least there's no clipping going on and that's what you want uh, okay so it's still probably going to go past 64 but that's okay. I think, I think we'll uh, we'll probably just trim it. I can show you how to how to do uh, some magic at the end. Um, okay, so let's see how many uh, how many. If you middle mouse on this on this node right here, you'll be able to see how many voxels you have. Here it says for each field that you have, you have eight hundred and forty three thousand voxels, which is more than enough to test your simulation and see how it looks. You know, there you go, you can see it's an explosion, it looks pretty good. Uh, but for when you render something and you want to use it for a game, you probably want to, you probably want a little bit more voxels than that. So to increase your voxel size, select your smoke object, go to your division size. Lower The lower this goes, the more voxels you have. But if you lower it too low, then your computer's going to break. Uh, so let's do 0 0.06, uh, just because this is a test, just to show you guys. Um, so once you've set your division size, always select this back arrow here. This will refresh the simulation and then middle mouse in here. Now you can see we have 2.4 million, which is more than enough to get a decent looking simulation out of this. Now I'm not going to press play because then it's going to slow down my computer. But what I am going to do is I want to cache this simulation. Um, so to do that, we go back up to object level. You go into your pirate import node and here, this is where you're going to drop down a file cache node. Here you are. And for a file cache node, all this does is it looks at your geometry, all your data that the import pyro fields is pulling in. And you can see what data the import pyro fields is pulling in by selecting it and then scrolling down to the bottom. And here you see it's in it's importing the density field, the velocity field, the rest, rest two, temperature, blah blah blah. If you don't want these fields, then you can just you click on one of these presets and then select the one that's more viable for you. So if you just want smoke and you don't want any fire in your explosion, then that's fine. You can just select smoke. Uh, and that's actually what I'm going to do uh, just to speed things up because the more you have, the longer it's going to take to, to render. Um, all right. So I think I'm happy with this. Up here, this is just saying where it's pulling in that information from. Um, now, as you can see, it's connected to this file cache node. If we select this, you can take a look at the frame start and end rate. So we don't want 140, uh, 240 frames rather, because that's a bit too much. Um, let's say 80 will do. So just in case you don't know, 80, the, if you select the bottom one, this is going to resize your, your frame length, your, your, your workspace essentially. And the top one is to, I'm not quite sure, is to temporary temporarily deselect the thing okay we have a frame range now uh, now we need to tell Houdini where to save the files so with the file cache node selected you can see up here it says geometry file um, it might look different for you if it looks like this just middle mouse on geometry file and then you'll be able to see in more human terms where it's going to save the files uh, so it's going to save in, in users Martin uh, geo so it's going to create a folder called geo and then it's going to, whatever the, the name of the file is, so currently it's untitled, which we can change. 
um, and then it's going to name the files file cache one for frame 41 blah 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 uh, bgo is and dot sc is something that you need to look out for this is the the file name that is is cached files if you see a file with this extension that's definitely something that you can load into Houdini uh, so let's quickly save this real quick save as uh, on my desktop I did a folder there you go let's just call this Houdini test and that will save it as a hip file um, and once you've created this file that will then automatically tell Houdini where to create other folders related to this project just in case you didn't know uh, right so start and end 1 to 80 geometry we've selected the location for the files uh, everything else is good we've checked in our import pyro fields we've got exactly what we want and to double check this by the way you can just middle mouse on the file cache and here you can see it says the density velocity and temperature which is what we need density velocity temperature so we're just going to select save to disk and then I'll come back when that's done. All right, we're back and my cache is done. So now we can go back up to our object level. We can actually uh, disable this preview node, this uh, display node, and also disable this one because we no longer need it. We can now press tab and create a geometry folder. We can call this uh, call this cache. Open up this. Now we're going to keep this node. This is a file node. This basically just reads in um, any files outside of Houdini. We're going to look for that uh, folder that we just saved in. So here you can see um, basically what it does is it looks at the file location that you saved your cache to and then it automatically creates a folder called the geo folder inside of your hip folder. If it's a bit confusing, don't worry about it. It's not that complicated. You'll get it eventually. Um, but yeah, you just open up your geo folder and this is where your cache should be saved. So you can see here, this is frames one to 80. Gonna load that in and then here it is. All right, you can see it's so nice. Um, so we're gonna, actually we're gonna untick this, this little brain at the bottom. What this does is it disables Houdini from simulating anything in, in in the in the object level so if you have this ticked it's going to think that you want it to simulate but we don't we just want it to read in the files that we've saved um, so that means you should be able to scrub along this a lot easier um, and it looks it looks nice but there's no lights in here so we should probably put some lights in we're going to do that real quick i'm going to try and fly by this as quick as i can i don't want it just to drag on too long um, but let's go up here to lights and cameras. We're going to control click on this camera and that's going to place a camera in our object level where our viewport was. We're then going to click this little padlock here and as you can read it there, it says lock camera. That means that when we now move in the viewport, it's going to move the camera for us as well. Um, we're going to put this camera right up at the top. Uh, maybe something, something like this. Um, if you're making it for video games, you're going to have to set the resolution to a power of 2. So for this case, we're going to make it 512 by 512. And we're also going to set orthographic. Um, that's just going to make framing it a lot easier. Make sure everything is in frame. Uh, yep, looks good to me. Cool. All right, now we can. Well, now we can disable the lock. Um, I'm gonna do that, and now we need to put in some lights. So we're gonna. So you see, without the lock on, and I move my viewport, it's gonna snap out of that camera, um, and it's not gonna move the camera. You can see the camera is still in here. So let's quickly put in a couple lights. Uh, we're gonna go to the same lights and camera. We're gonna put down a distance light. And remember, you should always make sure that your intensity on your lights all add up to one. Um, I'm going to put in three lights, so that means I'm going to put the intensity to 0.33 for each one. And we're going to move around, find a new angle, uh, something like this looks good. I'm going to control click, zoom out a little. Oh, 
select this, set this to 0.33 as well. There you go, looking a bit nicer now. I think one last one straight from this angle. Control click, set this to 0.33. Now it doesn't matter if, if this frame is all like zoomed in on your smoke because it's a distance light and a distance light doesn't care about the distance. Um, which is why it's named that. So there we go. There's our smoke. It's looking very, very puffy, very smoky. Um, now to see what your camera is looking, you could, I guess you could go up to the top and kind of guess where it is, right? It's over here somewhere. But instead you can just click on this up at the top right, select camera one, and now you're framed in perfectly so you can see what's going on. There you go. That's our explosion. Wonderful. Now you can see that there's some of these artifacts in here, like these lines. Um, the few tricks to solve this is you can select the folder where your simulation is and then go to render. And in this render tab, you can assign a material and you can do the volume filter. Always select this to Gaussian. This will give it a slight blur and it will fix any, any of these lines in the render. What I mean by this is because when you set up your voxels, if your voxel count is super high, but your resolution on your camera isn't that high, you have to remember that your camera also records 2D voxels, essentially, which are pixels. So if there's more than, if there's more voxels than there are pixels, then it's going to create artifacts and create things like this. So the best way to do it is just to give it a little blur, which is quite nice. Um, all right, so I think we are ready for rendering. We'll move on to that now. So to start our rendering, we're gonna click here on OBJ, come down to out for output, slap down a mantra up, uh, this one, mantra. And in here, we can now select how we wanna render it, um, what we want to render, and also where to save it in this output. Uh, the, just to see how this looks in this frame. Let's pick something a bit more interesting actually, more like this. We can click render to end play. And rendering to end play is basically a temporary way to save a frame. So you can take a look at how one frame looks before you end up wasting 24 hours of, of render time to, on something that maybe the shading isn't right, etc. Um, but we're gonna click that. And you'll see it's set to render current frame. So let's just give it a second. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. There it is. Right, so here you can see this is, this is essentially what one frame is gonna look like. It's okay, right? It's kind of speckly. It's not so great, you know, seen better. Um, but here you can see the channels that it's gonna render. So RGB. Um, and then your alpha. Your alpha can be important. It all depends on, on what method you want to use to import and export your cloud and, and how you want to use each one of these channels. Um, little tip is to really get creative about these channels. You can pack in things in here, like you can pack in the emission into your, into your blue channel. You can pack in your grayscale color into your red one, and then your alpha into your green or you can do some other, other crazy stuff. You can even put some normals in here uh, if you like. Uh, another thing to note is up here, we have uh, this little button here. This is gonna drop down anything else that you've rendered. So if you have rendered normals, this is where you'd find it, um, but we're not gonna do that today. Uh, all we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our camera is set. And also in rendering, we're gonna change it from ray tracing to micro polygon rendering. And the reason for that is, is that it should get rid of the speckliness in, in the shape of the cloud. Might take a little bit longer, but let's see. There you go, you can see it's a bit smoother now. And also the, the alpha mask is, is a bit nicer, even though it's very white. Um, if, I, if I was to, to render this um, at work, for instance, I would take a lot more time, obviously, um, to try and get the right values in the alpha because this alpha is almost almost useless uh, unless you do just want to use it for a transparency mask 
Um, but if you if you want to use alpha for uh, the emission, like black body or something, then I'd definitely take more time. But we can go into that in another video. So this looks okay for the color. I'm going to take that. I'm happy with that. So we have the color. The sorry, the camera is set. Micro polygon is on, and all this we can leave at default. Um, the output picture again. If you middle mouse on it, you can see in human terms where this is going to be set. It's going to make a new folder. So just like it did with the cache, when it made a geo folder, it's now going to make a folder called render. And then it's going to place our frames into this folder. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first, we need to set this valid frame range to render frame range. So now it's going to render frames 1 to 80. But again, don't forget, we're going to need 64 frames because each frame is a 512 by 512. Remember, that's how that's what we set our camera to. And we want 64 frames, which means it will be an 8 by 8 flipbook. If you do it at 80 frames, then we're going to have a weird looking flipbook and we'll have some wasted frames because they won't fit in the texture, uh, in a power of 2 texture anyway. Uh, right, so with 80 frames, what I'm actually going to do is I am going to keep the 80 frames and I'm going to show you later on some, some tricks how to cut off the frames that you don't need or trim or uh, crop and stuff like that. So you don't have to go into any other tools like Adobe After Effects, etc, etc. You can just do it all in Houdini. Um, all right, enough talking. I'll just press the button and then uh, I'll get back to you when that's done. All right, we're finally done with our render. Uh, we can now take a look in the image. Uh, this is our compositing network Here we can type in image network Open this up and then type in file This is going to do the same thing as the other file node. It's going to read in files outside of Houdini um, So this is the hip geo folder. We want to go up one into our render folder Here you can see that it's got the Houdini test mantra These are the frames 1 to 80 there you go, you can see it. Now to preview this, if I press play, uh, you can see it playing, but this is the scene view and not the composite view. So let's pause this, let's go up to our compositing view. Here we go, there it is. Wonderful. Okay, cool. So in the compositing view, you can do stuff. Think of the compositing view as Adobe After Effects or Photoshop or anything like that. You can basically uh, edit the values of your textures, which is exactly what we're going to do. So here you can see this is the alpha map and this is our color. This is all we're going to need. But we have 80 frames. So like I said before, we need to try and trim this out. These beginning few frames are pretty much useless because nothing really happened. It's not very exciting. What's that like 18 frames of nothingness that's going on? From there on, oh, there's actually, from then on, there's actually some nice movement going on. So we actually want those frames. So, what we're going to want is we're going to want a, if you pull out from here, press tab, and then you can see all the different tools that we've got available to us now. Uh, we want to go to timing, and then trim so we want to end at 80 and we just want to say all right well, let's get rid of the boring ones which is maybe 16 uh, or 15 let's make a 16 all right let's see how that looks if we put on the visualization tab there you go see now it's got nothing in there so now we can keep on frame 17 Change that to 17, and now that will just play from 17 onwards. Okay, so we're in Unreal Engine, and I'm just going to assume that you have basic knowledge of it, uh, being the UI, etc. So I have this folder here that I've just created, and I'm going to press import to find the file that we've just rendered out. Should be Houdini Tut, it should be in the render. And then these are all these EXR files are the individual frames. We don't want that. We've already used them in Houdini. We're looking for the TGA that we've saved out. So Houdini test. This is TGA. Here we go. 
I'll open that up and boom there you go so we now have this bring it over to your screen so you can see there's a 8x8 flip book should be able to use it quite nicely uh, don't worry about any of these you can look into this if you're in a studio then you should definitely know what all of these do these will help bring down the size and resolution etc of your flip book but for now this will do just fine so I'm gonna move this out of the way so uh, how do we actually put this to good use let's make a new material call this M underscore smoke underscore Houdini Oh, spell that wrong. Houdini underscore one. Sorry if you, my keyboard is loud. I have a mechanical one. Um, right. So here is the material that we've just created. We're gonna drag this in, and we're gonna simply just connect the dots. Uh, let's set this material. Let's make this a bit bigger. So if you select this node here you can alter what type of material it is so we want a translucent material which blacks out all these unnecessary nodes and we want to connect the color to the color we want to connect the alpha to the opacity and there you go that's our material all done and set up uh, now let's move this out of the way let's create a particle system P underscore Houdini smoke. Let's pull this in. Now let's see what we got. Okay, so again, I'm just going to assume that you have basic knowledge of Cascade and how to use it. But uh, let's just go ahead and take this material. We can do this by selecting the material, clicking this button, and that will select it in your content browser. Head over to your require tab drag and drop and let's see wait for it to compile there you go doesn't that look wonderful just kidding all right what we need to do is we need to go into the require tab here scroll down until you get to sub UV and then set this to linear blend and set the image horizontal and vertical to 8 because it's an 8x8 eight eight flip book now the game engine knows it's an 8x8 eight eight flip book which is great and now we're gonna take a we're gonna right click in here and go to sub UV and let's just say sub UV movie for now just to keep it simple you can kind of see it playing there starts off at the beginning and kind of gets to the end um, this sub UV node uh, movie you can select the frame rate that you want to play this at and you want to can also select the starting frame range but we want to go to the lifetime and let this live out a little bit longer because 64 frames being played at a 30 frames a second is going to be about 2.2 seconds that will allow it to fully play out its life there you go. Let's increase the size a little bit. 200, 200, 200, 100, 100. All right. Uh, it's kind of looking like something now. Let's just add something a little extra, like a sphere. Let's say not to spawn in negative Z. And Let's give it some more velocity. 500, 500. Uh, do. All right, so they're going a bit out of control now to control them. So you want to add some drag to that. There you go. Let's give it a drag of two. And now. We can add a size by life. Size by life. And here you go. This is like simple keyframing. Uh, keyframe one, keyframe two. Uh, in keyframe two, we want it to be at the end of its life, at value of one. We want the value to be. We want to multiply the size 
by four. All right, there you go. And we want to take the spawn, and instead of spawning it at 20, uh, at the spawn rate of 20, we want to have that at zero. Set this to maybe 10. There you go. And now to stop this from looping, we can go into required and set this to emitter loops one. And what else can we do? Let's see. Uh, we can add a random rotation, initial rotation. Now it will randomly rotate the sprite, so you can't. It's a bit harder to tell. But that's the same one. Uh, we're getting this clipping going on in the ground as well. We can quickly fix that. We can add in a depth fade. I'm not going to go too much into into shader work and and this and that. I'm literally just trying to show you the the pipeline from starting in Houdini and getting your stuff from Houdini to the Unreal Engine. So I think this will do for us for now. See how this looks. See if it's a bit more acceptable. All right, there you go. Let's unpause that. Oh yeah, quick tip: if you're in this viewport here, let's move this out of the way. If you're in this viewport and you want to pause something, so if you look at these flames, you can press Control R and that will pause everything. It's quite nice. You can take a look around and see what your effects look like. So let's get back to seeing this. Now you see it's it's catching, it's going to frame 64 and then going back on itself to frame one and two by the looks of it. So to stop that, what we can do is we can just lower the life down, lifetime, sorry, down to 2.1. And there you go. There you go, you have your simulation from Houdini in Unreal Engine. Now obviously this isn't a very pretty thing to look at and this isn't really something that you look in the game. Like for instance, it's not fading out right, um, there's, not, there's no lighting, it's not reacting to the, to the light. These are all things that we can change. Um, let, me fade, let me fix that fade for you real quick. Uh, it's something that you should know if you do use Cascade, but if you don't, what you're going to do in the material is you're going to put down a particle color and what these nodes do if they're red nodes like this um, and they begin with particle right so you can see there's a bunch of them in here they talk to cascade essentially they they transfer data between cascade and the material and what this does is the particle node is going to look at the color over life in here in here you've got different values in here which you can control in the material so what we're going to do is we're going to put down two multiplies put down multiply the colors together and multiply these alphas together uh, yep like that plug that in so we've now got Cascade. You can think of this as, this is Cascade. Cascade is now controlling the color and is now controlling the alpha. And with that, we can keyframe it, etc. cetera. Uh, let's go and apply. And you can see in the color over life, this is the default one that you get when you start Cascade. You open up all these pins. It's gonna start at the start of its life, it's gonna be white. And then at the end of the life, it's gonna be white. But for the alpha, at the start of its life it's going to be an alpha of one and then at the end of the life it's going to fade out to zero so now when you do this when you play you get this nice little fade all right well that's going to do it for this tutorial um i'll probably post another video as to how you can actually turn this sprite into something a bit more nice um something that you can use maybe with some fire in it i won't go over it in this video because i think this video has gone on for a bit too long uh, so yeah, feel free to comment in the sections if you have any more questions or queries, maybe if you want me to cover something else considering Houdini or even Fume FX, um, I'm up for that. I'll definitely try and cover it as best I can. All right then, well, thanks a lot for watching and uh, have a good day. 
All right, so we need a 64 frames, and it just so happens to be that 17 to 80 is 64 frames, so that will do for us. But there are some other tricks in here if you need to squish your squish your uh, simulations or, or whatever else. There's a, another useful one in here called uh, time scale. Here you go. If you put in time scale, you can basically double your simulation or half your simulation uh, see so now I've, I've times it by two if I say times by 0.5 then it will play the frames at twice the speed which means that it will cut off halfway so if you have more than 64 frames you can put this in and play with the time scale until you have something that you want but we don't want this because we have our 64 frames now if we pull out from here we're gonna get a mosaic node and mosaic node is where the magic happens this is where we now get our images in a texture sheet something that we can use within Unreal Engine uh, so we had 64 frames so up here you can see images per line we're gonna want eight and then the maximum frames is 64 there you go. So there's our 64 frame flipbook. This is all we're going to need for the Unreal Engine, you know, to create explosions or smoke poofs or whatever the hell you want. Uh, but there is one more thing I'm going to put in here, and that's called a pre malt. Uh, I'm going to put it in after here. So if we go pre multiply and view this and go up here to multiply by alpha. What this does is it basically looks at the pixel at the edge and then it carries on that color a little bit more. So you don't get any bleeding in Unreal Engine. Um, it just in, It's basically like a safety net just to make sure that the alpha is definitely got some color values in there instead of having the black values, this black here. All right, cool. So this is all we're gonna need. Let's go ahead and render this out. So again, by pulling off, pressing tab, we're going to type in rop, and then I want a rop file output. This is kind of the same as the mantra one, right? So we can set if we want a current, just the, the single frame, or if we want all the frames. We don't want all the frames, because remember, we've taken all the frames and put them, squished them into one frame into this flipbook. So we're going to re render current frame. And then this is the, you can look into all of this stuff, but you don't really need it. All you're going to need to know is this output picture needs to be set to a TGA. To set this, click on here. We can put this in the render folder, it doesn't matter too much. We can just get rid of this mantra. There you go. And we can say uh, this, this is TGA. Now, if you want to save this as a TGA, you have to make sure you do full stop, lowercase TGA, and that will now save your image as a TGA. You could also do uh, full stop, uh, JPEG, PNG, etc., but you have to make sure you type it in manually, whereas normally with other programs, you, you press it in here, but this one here just shows the files. It doesn't actually save the files. So let's go accept. And now here you can see you have the color plane is being saved as C and the alpha plane is being saved as the alpha channel. Color is C. You can change this as well if you want to change them around. What that means is that when you get the render, you'll have these three channels, red, green, blue, and then alpha. So this is the this is the alpha plane. So if you have something like a normal map, you can do the drop down here and say normal or an emission if you want fire in your smoke you can there'll be an e there for emission uh, just an fyi but you don't need to know that because we're just doing smoke for now cool uh, everything looks good we're just going to hit render now it shouldn't take too long it'll just be rendering one file there you go it's done so we're going to hop over to unreal engine now